Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Tuesday, November 19th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, InfoWars prepares to take over the controlled narrative of the JFK assassination. Then, will you have to surrender biometrics just to leave your airport? And Bitcoin hits high and loses it in 30 minutes. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Don't talk about him. Don't listen to him. Listen, he's the kook saying the government can't be trusted. He's the kook saying there's tyranny. He's the kook saying they're buying billions of bullets. Well, as the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination approaches this Friday, the city of Dallas is in a ham-fisted way censoring any free speech, any skepticism about the official story. But we're not taking this lying down. Texans are going to be protesting the censorship of free speech in Dallas. On Wednesday, Alex Jones will kick off three days of demonstrations and protests at the Federal Reserve Building at the corner of Pearl and Woodall Rogers Freeway, a location he's previously demonstrated at three separate times with other Americans. We are not going to be pushed aside as they do at the political conventions into free speech zones. That is clearly unconstitutional. Look at the First Amendment. This is specifically protected speech under the First Amendment. The right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government with grievances. We have grievances. We have grievances about the official story. It does not honor the memory of JFK to not have a honest investigation, to cover up what other people have found, to shove these things aside, to pull out clues and hide them in the National Archives, to literally fill in concrete curbs where uh, shots were ricocheted off. This is something that was a seminal moment in American history. This is when people not only saw an American president shot live on television and then his alleged assassin shot uh, afterwards, this was also a time where we saw government cover-ups, government lies, government conspiracies being crafted in real time. Anyone who's alive remembers this. And it was a period of time when we learned that our government was capable of the same sorts of things that we see in banana republics that we saw in Nazi Germany. It was an important lesson, one that we must not forget. And I think it's interesting that just today we learned something about a Nazi assassination, a Nazi cover-up. We learned that Field Marshal Rommel, who was involved in a, an assassination plot against Hitler, was actually forced to commit suicide. Now, this happened back in 1944, and the doctor who was who falsified the report under threat of being killed by an SS officer, Dr. Friedrich Breiderhoff, actually made a report to the police in Cologne in 1960. He filed a seven-page report. He was bothered about the lie. He was bothered about the cover-up of the forced suicide. But this did not come to light until just now. So here we are 70 years later and these documents are coming out. The truth will eventually come out. Most of the documents that the government has about the JFK assassination are still sealed. They're still secretive even after 50 years. And of course there have been many, many, many witnesses who have died under unusual circumstances. So the truth is going to eventually come out. We've had deathbed confessions from people who said they were associated with it. We're going to find out what's happened there. People are going to investigate it. But the most important thing is that we not allow the government to censor our free speech. The New American reports that hacker Jeremy Hammond, who hacked Stratfor emails, has been sentenced to the maximum sentence of 10 years for his crime. Now, he slammed government crimes. He said that the U.S. government was deliberately allowing Mexican cartel assassins into the United States. This was gleaned from the Stratfor emails that were hacked. And in other explosive revelations from the massive hack, produced more evidence that federal authorities in the U.S. have been quietly supporting certain Mexican criminal empires, especially the Sinaloa drug cartel. Now, it's not to say that Hammond didn't commit crimes himself. He did expose credit card data. However, exposing these crimes, there will still be no prosecution of anyone, just as there was no prosecution at the NSA for what Snowden exposed. Instead, you see McCain and Feinstein and Lindsey Graham calling for his jail, his internment in jail, 
but nothing for anyone who has broken the law as a government employee. Now, in a similar story today, we had the father of Brittany Murphy allege that she was murdered because she was involved in a yet another government conspiracy, another government crime, similar in many ways to this story from Jeremy Hammond. Now, in this case, Mr. Bertolotti, her father, said that there were, in fact, under surveillance, including helicopters. Their telephones were wiretapped. Brittany was afraid to go home because of the sneak and peek incursions of the residents and other terror tactics that she suffered after speaking out in support of whistleblower Julia Davis and being named as a witness in her lawsuit against the Department of Homeland Security. Now, what Julia Davis was blowing the whistle on was the fact that she had spotted information that al-Qaeda terrorists were crossing the Mexican border. And Homeland Security was not doing anything about it, so she went to the FBI, and they took recrimination against her. So we see that in the case of Hammond, there are Sinaloa drug assassins coming across the border. In the case of Davis and perhaps Brittany Murphy, we see a tale of al-Qaeda terrorists that are being allowed to cross the border by the government. And yet, we see that back in the spring, the HSBC money laundering scandal that Eric Holder decided not to prosecute anyone at HSBC about, it also involved these very same actors, the Sinaloa drug cartel, as well as Al-Qaeda. But of course, we were told that the bank was too big to jail, so they were just going to let that go along. They were going to pass on that prosecution. Perhaps there's a lot more to that than just the fact they're too big to jail, even though that's not much of an excuse to let them get away with committing these crimes that they've put other people behind jail for for many, many decades. Now, it was just yesterday that we learned about these detention pods that are being put in at the TSA. And while they may let terrorists and drug assassins freely cross across the border, understand that this is about you. This is about controlling your movement, your access, your exit even from the airports. Now we learn out more information today about these detention pods. We find out that they're going to be collecting biometric fingerprint data. Coming soon, biometric fingerprint scans just to leave the airport. The identity of the user, according to the company's website, is guaranteed via fingerprint iris or facial recognition scans before they're allowed to complete their passage from non-secure to secured areas. Well, they've already vetted you. They've already scanned you. If you're leaving the airport, supposedly you've already passed through all of their scans. And this is creating a very dangerous situation, just like the lines to get into the airport create a very dangerous situation for mass shootings, for bombings. You've got a lot of people massed at the entrance to the airport. Now, if there is a fire or if there's some other kind of disaster, people will not be allowed to quickly and safely exit the airport. But the main thing is that you understand that you are the slave of the TSA. The main thing is that they control everything about your movement and know everything about your movement. But don't laugh at this ridiculous charade. We were warned about that a couple of weeks ago. We had a recording from the Houston airport and we played that and did an article about it. We had one of our callers call in yesterday on the Alex Jones show and he actually questioned the TSA about their authority for threatening to jail people who joke about the TSA. Well, what is going on with Bitcoin? Now, a lot of people are looking for ways to escape the prying eyes of the federal government and its control, and so they're looking at alternative currencies or ways that they can store value or ways that they can move money out of the country. And so a lot of people are looking at Bitcoin, but we've seen wild fluctuations in volatil volatility over the last few days. Just back on Friday, it surged to $400. Then by Sunday, it was $500. Then by Monday, it went up to $600. And late Monday night, it got up to $900 and then dropped below $650 in just 30 minutes. So it dropped from $900 to $650 in just 30 minutes. Well, there have been hearings this week that involve the FBI, Homeland Security, even FinCEN. And they sound like they're supporting Bitcoin, like they're some kind of laissez-faire free market advocates. Listen to this quote from FinCEN. They said, whenever there's a new type of financial service or a new player in the financial industry, the first reaction by those of us who are concerned about money laundering is to think about the gaps and vulnerabilities. But it's also important we step back and recognize that innovation is a very important part of our economy. So what's going on here as we see these wild fluctuations? Are they pumping and dumping it? Are they trying to destroy confidence in Bitcoin? Are they trying to take it over? It's really not clear at this point what's going on. It's a very volatile situation. We're watching that carefully as people are looking for a safe haven for their money. 
Now, as they're manipulating Bitcoin, we've pointed out before that they also manipulate the employment figures. And now today we learn that that's official, that just before the election, they dropped the employment numbers below the magic 8% number just before they held the election. A lot of people called foul at the time. Now, at the time, the former CEO of GE, Jack Welch, tweeted, unbelievable job numbers. These Chicago guys will do anything. Now we learn today that at the Census Bureau, which does the unemployment survey, they knew that these numbers numbers were manipulated. That's come out today. Now, the other thing that's happening is as we see the stock market going wild, as we see Bitcoin with these wild fluctuations, a lot of people have made money in the stock market, but people who are working for a living are seeing hard times. And nothing underscores that more than this story about Walmart employees. It was reported in kind of a real life Hunger Games event that they're collecting donations for Walmart employees that cannot afford a Thanksgiving dinner. A local news station reported that there are bins being set up in the employee area saying, please donate food items here so associates in need can enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. A very sad sign of the times and a sign that money is being sucked out of this country at an ever increasing rate by these large multinational corporations like Walmart. Now, people will say, I've got nothing to hide, and I don't mind the government listening to my electronic communications. But take a look at this video. Hi, I'm Jack Vale, and I wanted to see how easy it would be to get personal information from complete strangers. And while I'm at it, of course, freak them out a little bit. Keep in mind, when you watch this video, I got all of this information just by searching their personal social media posts. And I got it by searching for the closest Twitter, Instagram, and other social media posts to my current location. You Stephanie? Uh, how do you know me? How you doing? I'm Jack. Did you just make that up and you just said that? No, uh, Elena, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was just gonna say happy birthday. People get creeped out, as they should, when they realize how they're being listened to. And right after the break, Gigi Arnetta is going to have a report about how the NSA traps you in their spy net. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch. The latest on the spy state includes Los Angeles. There have been Aruba network routers spotted in various areas of L.A., Government entities are latching onto this surveillance technique for various reasons, but one of the biggest advantages to this mesh network is that it can be installed and removed quickly without reliance on a fixed infrastructure. Wireless mesh networks are ideal for temporary spy assignments. They can spy and roll. A mesh can be set up and used for monitoring and surveillance during an incident or public event and easily packed up and moved to the next location. Any organization can deploy a wireless mesh network in the unlicensed 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz band and U.S. public safety band. This mesh wireless system is a great addition to your already intrusive Xbox, which can catch you in various positions and videotape you and expose your personal junk. You thought the TSA was intrusive. At least you had to go to the airport to get violated. Now you can depend on the person who installs the mesh routers outside your home to aid in violating your rights. Another option is to give all your information to the navigators at healthcare.gov and willingly allow DHS, DOJ, IRS, and even the White House into your private information, or they can just steal it from you on the giant spy grid. Either way, the monstrosity being built in Utah is equipped to store it all for you. And the giant bureaucracy of the healthcare system, along with many other communistic agencies, can access your information and use it against you at will. Sign up for PrisonPlanet.tv and give your username and password to up to 10 people. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News.